Two significant tropical cyclones in the Western Pacific. Typhoon threat from Tropical Storm Ma'a. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. bulletin for August 24th and again we're looking at the Western Pacific for the main uh, extent of our activity with Typhoon Takage moving off Japan category 2 well out to sea and Tropical Storm Mat on which also threatens to become a typhoon shortly as it crosses the South China Sea and approaches the coast of southern China Day 85 of Atlantic hurricane season, we have three areas of interest now, all littering the main development region. All at low chances though at the moment, uh, it's unclear whether any of them will get any significant traction, although it certainly looks rather interesting in the longer range. In the Eastern Pacific, we don't have anything marked once again, and the National Hurricane Center have backed down to a low chance for the area of interest that they had south of Baja California. So nothing here on our charts, day 102 of hurricane season. In the Western Pacific, Ma'an left the Philippines a few hours ago uh, and is headed west-northwestwards through the South China Sea and intensifying again. Tokaje moving off to the north and eventually northeast and could reach category three strength soon. In the Indian Ocean, the remnants of 4B are still active and now getting very close to the border with Pakistan. Uh, Western India still at the moment and still delivering significant amounts of rainfall over the region. Uh, long land transit there. Let's take a look at satellite imagery of the North Atlantic Ocean right now and you can see there is a general area or a general scene of disorganized disorganization, uh, many different areas of convection blowing up, a few along the Gulf Coast of the US, the Yucatan, but in, dis in terms of actual tropical systems, not much. Uh, Eastern Pacific, you can see what's left of that invest, and down there some more uh, tropical shenanigans in the intertropical convergence zone, but nothing of note. Massive flare-up along the western coast of Mexico over the Gulf of California, which is interesting, but nothing to do with tropical activity. And here is a close-up of Typhoon Tokaje right now, looking very good on the satellite imagery earlier. Looking more ragged now, but it may be coming back again. So interesting to see how that one's been progressing. North and northeastern sides uh, showing the most amount of convection right now after the northwest was looking flaky a few hours ago. And here is Ma'on right now as well. The Philippine name was Florita. It's now moved out of the Philippine area and is well over the South China Sea. It's a classic, classic shrimp shape and is likely to intensify a fair bit before reaching southern China and it looks like to me as though it's probably going to head towards the Lisu Peninsula. Uh, certainly that's uh, my take on that movement right now. I'm not seeing much of a northerly component in its motion. Here's a wide shot showing all of them or both of them in action um, and still rumblings of maybe a third system to their east uh, but nothing becoming of that just yet. Indian Ocean, you can take a good look there at what's left of 4B, only half a cyclone uh, or cyclonic shape that you can see there as it moves on towards Pakistan. Elsewhere it's fairly quiet, and monsoonal activity around the equator. Southern Hemisphere, what we can see here, nothing much, a lot of convection blowing up around uh, the Indonesian region but nothing uh, established, and a little few areas of thunderstorms north of the Solomons. Elsewhere though, pretty quiet. Sea surface temperatures at this point in the Eastern Pacific, you've got that warm area uh, in the usual area that we see cyclones form. 30 degrees along quite a bit of the Mexican coast, certainly can't rule out a late season surprise. The Atlantic Ocean obviously very warm in the Gulf of Mexico, over 30 degrees Celsius. The uh, Western Caribbean being the hot spot of Cuba usually is, but there it is once again. And over the Sargasso Sea and the Western Atlantic, huge area, vast sea there, expanse of 26 degrees Celsius waters or higher. 
Indian Ocean looking okay, Bay of Bengal for any further developments, temperatures are there, 28 degrees plus. There is Matt on right now, over 30 degree waters, but it's going to exit them shortly. And Tokaje there, uh, moving northwards and the sea surface temperatures will fall away pretty quickly. I would say it's only got about 24 hours left of meaningful time to intensify. But anything that comes up after that in the Western Pacific has still got a huge ton of energy. And looking at how Tokaje might have been possible more than usual, the sea surface temperatures in the subtropical and the extratropical zones there are very high compared to average in the Western Pacific and in the Atlantic. The tropical regions are much more closer to average, especially in the Atlantic, uh, but generally it is all above average right now. Oceanic heat content is through the roof in the Caribbean Sea and part of the Gulf of Mexico where the loop current is and around the Bahamas. The Eastern Pacific is catching up just a little bit further, the Western Pacific obviously looking very good and even some oceanic heat content further up north as well on the same latitude as Tokyo which is just where that typhoon is heading towards right now. Computer models, so this is the short term for the Atlantic, look out for any green areas, that's tropical storm status, but you won't see any on this loop I don't think, but you can see three areas maybe that try to establish a circulation, the most notable one I would say is the most uh, westerly one, moves through the, the Barbados and the Lesser Antilles there, and then by the 27th, 28th of August, you can see it developing once again, maybe a circulation by the time you get to the 29th and maybe a tropical depression, who knows. The Western Pacific, you can see these two storms. Matt on, the GFS wants it to reach typhoon status and then make landfall, calling for maybe an 85 mile per hour system. I know that was what the JTWC fancied yesterday. Um, as for Tokaji there, you can see it intensifying just a little bit more, although the GFS has already underestimated this system. Models will struggle to catch up on that one due to its intensification earlier, and I would suggest that it will intensify possibly a little bit more if it gets its act together. Looking at rainfall estimates over the next few days for Matt on, this is what we're quite concerned about for the southern coast of China and into northern Vietnam. You can see there that CESA, um, not sea surface temperatures, but the precipitation amounts uh, caused by the storm's energy could reach 10 inches in some areas, 250 millimeters, and isolated maximums of maybe 12, that would be around 300 millimeters in southern China, and then up to around 7 inches in parts of northern Vietnam, that is around 150 millimeters, I believe. So that shows all of that rain area there could be quite substantial as we've already seen in the Philippines. In the longer range, day 5 to 10, watch the Caribbean there, potentially a system forming, there it is, tropical storm through Jamaica, then onto Cuba and another system forming in the eastern Atlantic. Then you've got a hurricane there moving through the Florida Keys and off the western coast of Florida, day 5 to 10 there. Uh, still quite a long way out for that last part, but I'm sure that's going to raise quite a few eyebrows. The second system moves through the Cape Verde Islands and possibly reaches brief hurricane status before degenerating again out in the main development region. Wet Eastern Pacific also showing some development in towards the end of that 10-day uh, period. An extremely broad area tries to develop here on the GFS model. Um, I would doubt that this would happen, uh, but it would be quite crazy if we did see that form because look how broad it is when it first starts to develop there on day 5 through 10. Quite substantial, quite interesting. Um, but that's all the Eastern Pacific or Central Pacific has to offer in that time period. So the Western Pacific, another system forming potentially approaching the coast of Japan and having a bit of an erratic track playing around with the front there and then eventually getting sucked inland. Not a very long lasting or strong system but that's what the model's throwing up right now. Different variations of this storm um, have been visible on previous model runs. Uh, so. Who knows what might happen with that, this is probably one of the weakest scenarios that we've seen for this potential storm. Now here is the Indian Ocean and a potential uh, South Indian Ocean cyclone in that time range as well there that the GFS is throwing up, although to be fair it does that quite a lot. 
Uh, Arabian Sea also tries to throw together an extremely broad area of interest as well towards the end of that 10 day period. Uh, but all of that is quite a way out and difficult to establish any confidence uh, to this extent just yet. That's all the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where you can not only take a look at our stock but also request individual or full season storm animations and the still waiting for Hone t-shirt which is limited edition in the sense that it will be gone when Hone forms. Who knows when that will be. Alright then, the silly range this hurricane gets pretty strong, maybe even category 4 and moves into the Florida Panhandle and then inland. The next system forms, reforms again and then moves much more poleward uh, and possibly reaching hurricane status maybe for a second time there. Uh, this is extremely far out so I would not go crazy about it at all. I know lots of people do. The hype machine is in full force in some parts, uh, but not here. What happens with this other system in the long range in the eastern Pacific? Well, it does get itself together and looks like a decent tropical storm. And check how far it goes. It almost makes it to an actual tropical landfall in California. Now, that'll be the day, uh, but that is extremely long range. And uh, if that happens, that would be absolutely crazy. But that is right towards day 16. So uh, it's silly range and it's silly range for a reason that is in all plausibility not going to happen. Western Pacific in the silly range as well. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Anything forming and there's the ignition point. Same area as the last two as it would be at that point. And quite a similar track to uh, Tokaji actually, although it moves a little bit more to the northeast, sneaking its way around east of Japan. Also right at the end of that loop there you may have missed another system forming in the South China Sea near Hainan. Uh, just around now two systems actually compete and one of them dominates into the Gulf of Tonkin but once again that is a silly range very very far out. On this day was a historic day in hurricane history particularly in Florida because Hurricane Andrew made its extraordinary Category 5 landfall. Uh, just south of Miami near Homestead. Uh, it was an extremely destructive storm and I hope that we never uh, underestimate how much Andrew changed uh, our perceptions on hurricanes and the whole science behind it as a lot of change happened after Hurricane Andrew. Uh, it's so long ago now, my goodness, 30 years to the day. In the Atlantic, the next name this year is Danielle, which ironically is the same naming list as the one Andrew was in. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Javier, and in the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. In the West Pack, the next name now is Hinamnor, followed by Muifa. In the North Indian Ocean, we are still out there waiting for Citrang. And in the Southern Hemisphere, when we begin to name storms there, the next name in the Australian region is Darien. The Southwest Indian Ocean will start with Ashley. And in the South Pacific, our next name upcoming is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back with another one tomorrow night.